This is a verbatim recording of a lecture I gave a few weeks ago on the inner meaning of I am that I am. In the third chapter of Exodus, we read these words, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God said to Moses, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee to Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me, unto you. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial for all generations. When you say I am, you are announcing the presence of the living God within you. You are declaring yourself to be. I am that I am. The word that indicates that which you want to be, that which, that which you would like to be. And the second I am means the answered prayer, achievement, fulfillment of your desire or I dream or aspiration. You do not repeat, I am that I am, part-like, not at all. But you feel yourself to be what you long to be. You get interested, fascinated, absorbed in your ideal. It begins to gel in your mind. Whatever is impressed in the subconscious is expressed upon the screen of space. Then comes the cry of victory, you see. The wholeness, the beauty, the perfection, the thing you wanted to be. You can say, for example, I am illumined. I'm inspired, I'm divinely guided, I'm made whole. You can live in that atmosphere because whatever you attach to I am, you become. Whatever you attach to I am with feeling, with understanding, you will become that very thing. For example, if you're looking for your true place in life, this is a simple prayer, but it works in a magnificent, wonderful way. I have given it to many people throughout the world. Do this. Say to yourself, I am in my true place. I am doing what I love to do. I'm divinely happy. I'm divinely prospered. Say that feelingly, knowingly, and meaningfully. And then the deeper mind will take over and open up all doors for you. Your hidden talents will be revealed to you. The door will open up and you will find yourself in your true place, meaning you will be expressing yourself at your highest possible level. I am means awareness, being, life principle, unconditioned consciousness. The, in, the Hindus use the word om, A-U-M. It's the same thing. It means being, life, awareness, unconditioned consciousness. It means the limitless one. It means the holy one who inhabited the eternity, whose name is perfect. You can say, for your, for example, I am whole, I am perfect, I am vital, I am strong. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the widow say, it is well. Take your attention away from your problem, whether it's sickness, lack, limitation, be it what it may. Focus your attention on your ideal, your goal, your objective. Claim yourself to be what you long to be. Rejoice and feel it. And then... The old condition will pass away and 
you will experience the joy of the answered prayer. The Bible says, Behold, I, meaning the infinite, make all things new. The Bible says, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The word salvation is an old Hindu term, meaning solution to your problem, the answer to your prayer. It means, of course, saved. Saved from what? Well, you're saved from fear, ignorance, superstition. You're saved from sickness, disease, lack, limitation of all kinds. Why? Because you're aware of the God presence within and your capacity to contact it. And when you call upon it, it answers you. It will be with you in trouble. It will set you on high because you hath known its name. Its name is nature, the way it works. Behold, I stand and knock at the door. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. The God presence is always knocking at the door of your heart. It's always seeking to express itself at higher levels through you. You are a channel of the divine, and therefore you must listen to the murmurings and whisperings of your heart strings, because God is forever saying to you, Come on up higher. I have need of you at higher levels. Therefore your desire is the gift of God. The realization of your desire is your Savior. If you were lost in the woods, divine guidance or the light of God would illumine your pathway and reveal to you the way out. If you're hungry, food is your savior. If you're dying of thirst in the desert, water is your savior. If you're in prison, freedom is your savior. If you're sick, health is your savior. So the answer is always within you. And the saving consciousness is within you because God involves you. I rejoice, the Bible says, in God my savior. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, meaning to quiet the wheels of your mind. Call upon this infinite intelligence which responds to you. If you ask for a fish, it will not give you a serpent. If you ask for bread, it will not give you a stone, meaning it becomes the embodiment of your ideal. Have a deep conviction that all is well in spite of all the reasons why the condition seems to be impossible. Remain unmoved. Live in the atmosphere of victory, and victory will be yours. Having seen the end, you have willed the means to the realization of the end. Contemplate the happy ending. Realize and know that all the power of the Godhead will flow to that focal point of attention. I am as pure and conditioned being. It is the creative power. It deals with the infinity of God. Another way of explaining it is this. I means the infinite. A comes from Ab, meaning the father, and Mem means the mother. In other words, the infinite is the father, mother, God, the male and female principle. The ancient Hebrew said that God, in order to create, divided himself into two, namely male and female. Then God conceived himself to be the sun, the moon, the stars. He believed himself to be man, pictured himself as man, and all these archetypes our patterns were given to the female aspect of himself, which is called the womb of God, which created all things in sequence and brought forth all things in this universe. All things were made that way, and there was nothing made that is not made that way. Well, you're created the same way. You're male and female too. Your conscious mind is the male, and your subconscious is the female. And whatever you impregnate or impress upon the subconscious or the female aspect of yourself, the subconscious brings forth, good, bad, or indifferent. You may say, I'm a man, I'm an Englishman, I'm a Scotsman, I'm an attorney, I'm a doctor, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. These are facts about yourself, but they are limitations of the infinite one, for God is limitless. In other words, you're the conditioned state of the unconditioned being. These states I just mentioned, of course, are constructive expressions of the infinite. But God is unlimited. It is pure, unconditioned being. It is the limitless one, the Holy One of Israel, it's called. To say that God is anything in particular implies limitation or circumscription. God is infinite. Man is something particular. Man is the individualization of God consciousness. Emerson said every man is God walking the earth. In other words, God became man by believing himself to be man. So man is God in limitation. And therefore, you are born with certain endowments, certain talents and abilities. You're unique. There's no one in all the world like you because you are you. 
Perhaps you're mechanically inclined, perhaps you're musically inclined, perhaps you're spiritually inclined, and so on. We're all different. There are no two blades of grass alike, no two crystals of snow, and no two veins on a tree are alike, you know, or two leaves either. Infinite differentiation is the law of life. Some men are tall, some are short, some are very fat, some are thin, and some are born blind, some are crippled, and so on. And so we're all different. We're all equal in the eyes of God. But men are not equal in strength or wisdom or understanding or anything else. Um, now, you can also do this. You can attach negative things to I am. Remember, I want to stress this. Whatever you attach to I am with feeling you become. You can say, I am dumb. I am inferior. I am rejected. I am no good. I am inferior. I am sick. I am frustrated. I am lonesome. I am unhappy. I'm poor. All these things will come to pass as you continue to reiterate them because they sink down from your conscious to your subconscious and just like seeds, they grow after their kind. Therefore, be sure that you do not attach anything to I am that is not noble, godlike, and dignified. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. What does that mean? The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is within yourself. It's your own consciousness. It's your awareness of being. It's the invisible part of you. It's your mind, your consciousness, your thoughts, your imagination, your feeling, your beliefs, the invisible part of you. Your state of consciousness is what you think and believe. It's what you feel. It is what you imagine yourself to be. Therefore, your state of consciousness is whatever you think, feel, believe and give mental consent to. All these things are dramatized on the screen of space. Your consciousness is the only God, the only creative power, because the invisible part of you. It's your thought and feeling which creates your destiny. These are elements of divinity. And your consciousness, your state of consciousness, is the sum total of your conscious and subconscious thinking, feeling, and believing. You first, therefore, go within your own consciousness, your own mind, and there you claim to be what you want to be. And that spirit within you will honor, validate, and execute it. Go within, shut the door of your senses, pray to your Father which is in secret, and the Father is the creative power, it's the progenitor, it's the life principle within you, it's the source of all things, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is the thought expressed. You're told the Word is God too, because it's creative. If you hypnotize a man and you put your finger on his neck and say, this is a red-hot poker, well, he'll get a blister, won't he? He'll have vesication and separation, and separation, which, of course, are, ch are changes in the autonomic nervous system. You'll see a blister. In other words, the beginning and the end are the same. The thought and the manifestation are one, aren't they? Therefore, thoughts are things, and what you feel you attract and what you imagine you become. Therefore, of course, whatever you want, you go to consciousness for it. That's the meaning of seek ye first, the kingdom of heaven, and the righteousness, the right use of the law. Uh, your concept of yourself determines your future. Now, your world is called good and very good because it is the likeness, the image and the likeness of the consciousness which made it. For example, the law of the Lord is perfect. The law is always perfect because if you are conscious of being one thing and then should you express something other than what you claim and feel and believe to be true, that would be a violation of the law. It wouldn't be good. Isn't it natural for an apple seed to become an apple tree? Seeds grow after their kind. Therefore, if you feel one thing in your heart, and you express something else on the screen of space, that would be a violation of the law of being. If a man is full of hatred, resentment, hostility, and ill will, and so forth, he certainly can't express love, peace, beauty, joy, or anything else in his life. These negative emotions get snarled up in the subconscious, and being negative must have a negative outlet. The law is not being broken. The law, we said, is always perfect. It brings forth the likeness of man's conception of himself. All the divisions in the world are projections of the one, the beautiful, and the good. God commands himself to be the seeming other, for there is no other. The absolute can contain within itself something which is not itself, otherwise it would not be the absolute. 
The absolute comes from ad, the father, salvio ero, meaning that the whole world and everything you see comes out of the absolute, comes out of the one. But there's only the one. Uh, <clears throat> the ancient Hebrews define it this way. They say, ever the same in my inmost being, eternal, absolutely one, whole, complete, perfect, indivisible, timeless, shapeless, and ageless, without face, form, or figure, the silent, brooding presence fixed in the hearts of all men. I am the virgin snow on the mountain top. I am the fruit in the valley depths. I am the gold and the silver on the altars dedicated to the gods. Yea, I am the mire left on the sandals by the faithful at the temple gate. Hear me and see me in all, O man of God, and thou shalt see indeed. That is to say, every single thing you see is God made manifest. God appearing as the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the mud, the earth, and as every single thing that you see. This is God becoming all these things, for God thinks, as the Upanishad said, and worlds appear. For example, you can say, I am, announce the presence of God. Whenever you say, I am, remember, you're announcing the presence of the living God within you. The word is nigh in thy mouth and thy heart to will and to do. The people down through the ages have looked for the Holy Grail. They've looked for the lost word, the philosopher's stone. And all the time, the word is in their mouth a thousand times a day. It's called I Am. Announcing, pure being, the reality of you, the living spirit within you. It was never born, it will never die. Water wets it not, fire burns it not, wind blows it not away. Yes, it is the reality of you. That's a wonderful thing to know. It's a marvelous thing to realize. The Bible says, Happy is the man that condemneth not himself and that which he alloweth. In other words, stop condemning yourself. Realize that you can now claim what you want to be. You can claim that you now possess what you long to possess. You can now claim that you're doing what you long to do. You can live in that mental atmosphere which will gradually sink down by osmosis from your conscious to your subconscious, gradually become a conviction as you nourish it and sustain it. Then your limitation will disintegrate, and you will rise like the phoenix from the ashes of the old. You'll become the new man. Because I must die to what I am before I can live to what I long to be. That's why Paul says, I die daily. You must die to the belief in poverty and resurrect the belief in God's opulence. Die to the belief in sickness and believe it's God's will for you that you be happy, joyous and free, vital and strong. And claim that the wholeness of God is flowing through you. Take your attention away from the multitude of reasons why you can't achieve something. And focus your attention on your ideal. Nourish and sustain it. And the answer will come. Keep on keeping on. And the day will break and all the shadows will flee away. Remember that God is a living spirit within you, movie as unity. And God is all bliss, all peace, all harmony, all joy, all love, boundless wisdom, infinite intelligence, and absolute and indescribable beauty. God is called by many names, Allah, Brahma, Jehovah, the El, El Shaddai, Adonai, and many other names. There are 67 names, for example, in the Psalms given to God, but they are, deal with powers and attributes, qualities, and potencies of God. For God has no name. Now, you cannot contact the God presence within if you're full of cruelty, self-pity, condemnation, ill will. No. When you pray, you're told, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Heavenly Father may forgive you. If you um, come to the altar to offer your gift, doesn't the Bible tell you, if you have ought against your brother, come and make friends with your brother. Then come and offer your gift, but your gift is your desire. The altar is your own mind where you walk and talk with God. The only gift you can give God is praise and thanksgiving. Come into his presence singing, come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. But you must come uh, unspotted, you know. There must be no spot in thee. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. For love is the fulfilling of the law. The law of health, of happiness and peace. Therefore, when you go to God, you must be full of love and goodwill. And love is an outreaching of the heart. It's an emanation of goodwill. It is wishing for all men what you wish for yourself. Therefore, you wish for those who hurt you. 
love, peace, harmony, joy, and all the blessings of life. You know when you're forgiven because there is no sting in your mind. If you had an abscess a year ago, it was very painful, perhaps. Maybe the doctor lanced it. And the wound was very, very painful. Perhaps you remember there was excruciating pain. But you have no pain now. You have a memory, but no sting. That's forgiveness. If you heard of some marvelous news about someone who wronged you or cheated you or swindled you, or said unkind things about you, or undermined you, and I told you some marvelous and wonderful news about that person, and you sizzled, it means the roots of hatred are still there in your subconscious mind playing havoc with you. Because the healing power of God does not flow through a contaminated consciousness. No more so than the water flows through a sink when the pipe is all stopped up. Perhaps the pipe is full of corrosion or rust or debris or sand or something. The plumber comes and removes it, but the water was always waiting to flow through. Likewise, the healing power of God is within you. You don't create it. It's called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Wholeness. And all disease is fragmentation, separation from the divine. Therefore, you must be in a state of purity and wholeness when you go to God. And that's love, isn't it? Oh, yes. And then you'll get an answer. Then the healing will come. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. In other words, put God first in your life. Do you put something before God? Do you say, I'm too busy? Are you saying you're too busy for God? Oh, no. You do not give power to any created thing. You do not give power to sticks or stones or stars or suns or moons or men or conditions or circumstances. Everything is subject to change. The thinker is greater than his thought. The artist is greater than his art. And the creator is greater than his creation. The scientific thinker does not give power to any created thing in this universe. He does not give power to the phenomenalistic world or anything therein contained. He gives allegiance, devotion, and loyalty to the I am within him. The only presence, the only power, the only cause, the only substance. The minute... You give power to any other thing in the world. You're practicing idolatry, sometimes referred to in our Bible as adultery. But these words are synonymous. In other words, you're cohabiting with evil in the bed of your own mind. 